So in January of 2025, which if you're doing the math was like 10 months ago, I made a video titled, this time is going to be different, I hope. And I was announcing the fact that I was going to do a long-term review of Emacs. Now, if you are a YouTube member or you're one of my patron supporters, you'll know that I am a bit of a coward. <laughs> when it comes to Emacs and my YouTube community. I made a patron-exclusive podcast a month or so after I talked about my long-term review, stating that I was giving up, that I wasn't using Emacs at all at that point, that I completely uninstalled it, and I hated it, and it was, it was, it was over. I made no further announcements about Emacs on my channel, in terms of a review. Now, I have made a Emacs video since then about buffers, and I've talked a little bit about what's going on in that video, but I've now been using Emacs full-time since the middle of August. Now, as I record this, we're just starting November, so I've been using it for a few months, and initially I wasn't really doing the long-term review thing. I, w I got talked into starting my Emacs journey again because of a bet, I won that bet, and I'm happy about that. So uh, I'm uh, I could have stopped using Emacs now, but today's video is about why I finally get it. Well, kinda. I, I more should say I finally like Emacs, and I've situated myself in it to such an extent that I'm probably not leaving it behind. So. Let's talk about Emacs, shall we, and why I finally like it. So first off, let me get the thing out of the way. I'm in no way saying that Emacs is better than Vim, okay? I don't believe that is true at all. In fact, I, I have gone out of my way to make Emacs function as much like Vim as possible because that's what makes me happy. I have e evil bindings and I've created recreated uh, Nerd Tree and I've recreated a whole bunch of stuff that I had in, in Vim and, and made it in Emacs. So I still am of the opinion that Vim is the best text editor ever. Like it's, that, that's, it has my heart, it always will. But, I've been using Emacs now for a little while, and there are certain things about it that are just good, and good enough to keep me around. So, first off, the biggest one, actually, we can actually show you this if I can find the, the cursor. Right here, you'll see my Emacs live and in person. So, as you can see, I still have the header, I still like them better. <laughs> but, overall, this is what my Emacs looks like. I have a, a, a dashboard here, I've got the status bar along the bottom, all that stuff. But really, the things that I like the most about it are the fact that it does mark down spectacularly well. And it's just terminal-like enough that it makes me happy. So I'm a terminal guy. I prefer to do all my work inside of the terminal, and I always will. Emacs, by default, is a GUI application. Now, you can use Emacs in the terminal, that's perfectly fine if you do so, but it's not quite the same. So if I actually open up a terminal here and actually open up Emacs, which I have still mapped to the letter V, you can see my Emacs isn't quite the same in the terminal. The, the font is a little bit smaller. The Obviously, there's no images in the terminal version outside of you know icons, but if you wanted an image, you can do it really all that well. I'm sure there's ways around that if you're using Kitty or whatever, but you know it's just... It's not quite the same. So I prefer to use the GUI version for multiple reasons. First off are the images. You can put images in there. But if if I were to open up one of my blog posts, you can actually see that there's some really good markdown here. So for so for example, like the list here does a really good job ha having this stuff here. Now, all of this stuff is 100% capable in Vim as well. But one of the cool things about Emacs is if I were to do, say, a heading here, I can do a heading like that and it actually changes the text size that's awesome now i don't use headings a ton but it's still really nice to have i've also spent so much time with my config that i can actually have the things that i need so i have like a file manager there along the side i can actually use dear ed if i want to i can do something like that i can open up all of my buffers like that you know so i've gotten so comfortable inside of them, not just because of the markdown, but because of the 
niceties of file management that just do a really good job. Now, all of that stuff is capable of being done in Vim, of course, but my config of, of NeoVim wasn't fantastic. I started off with, I, I, for the longest time, was using VimScript as my config language, and I had all of the plugins and stuff that I wanted to have, and it was really, really good, right? But eventually, I decided I was going to move over to Lua, and I started off with Kickstarter.Vim, which is a tool that allows you to basically kickstart yourself into having a Lua config for NeoVim. And while that worked, it took me a long time to get things kind of working right, and eventually, it just wasn't really working on that much, so I downloaded Bread on Penguin's NeoVim config because she had a whole bunch of really good stuff in her specifically surrounding Markdown. And I was using that for a little while before I started using the Emacs stuff. So my NeoVim config wasn't really my own. And it would have taken a long time to actually get to that point. So once I got into Emacs and was kind of forced to use it and set it up the way that I wanted to, it has just been an experience that has been really, really good. And because I've gone and made it so much like them, I'm very comfortable with it. It's also been one of those things where you may not like the thing that you started started out with very much at the beginning, but as you go through and kind of make it your own, it just gets so comfortable it's hard to leave. I think that's where I'm at with Emacs. There are certain things that I just like the way that this functions. And while I could get them on them, that required doing all this work over again. And I'm here now, like I have this and it has certain features like the variable font sizes, the ability to do images really easily, the better buffers that it has, the just phenomenal buffer support out of the box. Even it's just really, really good. So there's just certain things that just make it better for me at this moment in time. And that's the reason why I'm still using Emacs. I've also, kind of formed muscle memory around actually doing this. So all of the scripts that I used to have that would launch me into NeoVim now launch me into Emacs. All of the muscle memory I had of actually launching a terminal, typing the letter V in order to get into to, to NeoVim, all that stuff now goes into Super M, which just opens Emacs for me. Now, every once in a while, I still use the terminal version of Emacs if I'm already in the terminal, but mostly I've been using the GUI part, and it's just part of me now. And I feel a little dirty about it because I'm such a Vim guy, but once I got it to the point where it just works for me, I have no interest really in leaving it behind. Now, let's talk about org mode because I don't use org mode at all. And I have no interest in using org mode. Every Emacs guy will tell you that the reason to use Emacs is org mode. And I think org mode is cool. I've tried it a little bit. It's just not for me. I have no interest in it because I write all of my stuff in Markdown. Every single thing that I write, whether it's for work, it's a blog post for my personal blog, it's a blog post for the TLC blog, it's notes for my, da my, you know, my daily notes or, or a quick note or whatever, all of it is written in Markdown. It makes no sense to me to learn something else to write those things in when I'm just going to want them in Markdown again because the app that I use for my phone is a Markdown editor. So basically, if I were to use org mode for all the things that I do, I would have to learn it first. So I'd, I'd get comfortable in org mode and write everything in org mode. I'd have to find however it is that you translate the stuff into whatever you, know, whatever you want it into. So you, I'd want to translate it into Markdown, which is silly because I need it in Markdown. So then I would have to translate it into Markdown, get it on my phone, do anything that I want to do on my phone. And then once I got back into you know, synchronizing it back to my computer, it would then have to be translated back into org mode. Instead, what I do is I just write it in Markdown, it's synchronized through sync thing, the phone can read it because it's in Markdown, and it's synchronized back. They, they're reading the same language, you know what I mean? So, it makes no sense to me to, to do the org mode thing, and then just have it translated into something that I'm already writing it in. And especially when I, th I, I feel, from the little bit of org mode that I've looked at, Markdown is actually easier to do. Maybe it's just because I'm more familiar with it, I don't know, but for me personally, our Markdown is good for me in terms of it's just easier. So, I'm not going to do I'm never going to use org mode. And maybe that's a part of the Emacs experience that I'm going to be missing out on. I don't think that that's the case. I like Emacs the way that I've set it up and I think that it's fine. So, there's that. I, I know a lot of people are like, oh, you got to use org mode. You got to use org mode. I, I'm not using org mode. I have no interest in it whatsoever for reasons I just said. So uh, if you are 
uh, upset about the fact that I'm not using warm mode. I mean, I'm sorry, but it's just the way that it, it the way that it is. So I'm an Emacs guy now. I don't know whether or not that makes me happier or not because I've I've spent years proselytizing about how awesome Vim is and everything that Vim can do, and I'm still of the opinion that Vim is awesome. It does everything that you wanted to do and if you can't find a way to do it you know that's more of a you problem than a vim problem and it just works really really well as a text editor emacs is so much more than i'll ever need in terms of power and stuff like that i've learned so much emac elisp stuff over the course of the last three months it's kind of flowed in one ear and out the other but i've done things in elisp that i could never do in emacs very easily right it's just a limitation of what these things are. Emacs is a Lisp interpreter, whereas Vim is, it's a text editor that can do some fancy things with plugins, right? It's not quite the same thing. And uh, like I said, I, I'm just, it is what it is. I'm an Emacs guy now. So the question that I guess I would have to ask myself is, will, is there, will there come a time when I will go back to NeoVim? And the answer to that question is maybe. I really enjoyed putting together my Emacs config. Now, I had a lot of help with that, but overall it was a really good experience building from the ground up and understanding quite a bit of what goes on in there. There's quite a bit of copy and paste in my Emacs config, and there's a little bit of Claude in there that helped me out, specifically around the Pywall stuff, because the Pywall stuff confused the fuck out of me, and a lot of the theming stuff, which should have been my bread and but butter, but I have it so complicated with my Bash script and all that stuff, switching back and forth between Pywall and actual color schemes that it was just too confusing. So I, I did a little AI nonsense there. But overall, I had a lot of fun building my stuff up from the ground up and there's a part of me that wants to go do that with NeoVim to actually start with a Lua config on my own without kickstarter.vim and build it up from scratch whether or not I'll actually do that I don't know it sounds like an awful lot of work for just basically recreating Emacs again because like I have all the features in Emacs now that I want and the, the key bindings and all the stuff is very good I, I'm not sure what I gain by going back to NeoVim, to be honest with you. So uh, that's it for this one. If you have any thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon. That link will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. There you'll find a weekly exclusive podcast that I put out for all my supporters. Basically, it's just me sitting in front of this microphone just for 15 minutes or so, just rambling on about nonsense. So if that's the kind of thing that you're interested in, uh, definitely uh, head on over there, check that out, or you can do the YouTube member thing. I, I also post it for my YouTube members, so there's that. If you want to support me on uh, by getting merch, you can find hats like this one, or t-shirts, or backpacks, or stickers, or desk mats, or whatever you want to do. That's shop.thelinuxcast.org. There you'll find all sorts of awesome merch, and all the proceeds for that go directly towards helping me make more Linux content for you guys, so uh, check that out as well. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Thank you so very much for your support. I truly, truly do appreciate it. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now, so thank you so very, very much for your support. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. I will see you next time. Um, uh, still using Emacs, I suppose. Thank you.